So then in the salah, we start with takbir al-ihram. Right? Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater than everything. Allah is greater than His creation. Allah is greater than whatever your mind can, can encompass. Whatever you think about is not Him. Allah is greater than whatever your eyes can see. Your eyes will never see Allah. لا تدركه الأبصار وهو يدرك الأبصار Allah is greater than being likened to the creation in any way. And when you say Allahu Akbar, you're putting the whole creation behind you. That's when you put your hands up, Allahu Akbar. And then in that moment, you enter khalwa. You enter seclusion. And the first of the, th there's three seclusions here. The first seclusion is physical. You do not eat in salah, invalidate it. You do not drink in salah, it would invalidate it, right? You do not look around, you do not talk to people, right? You enter a physical khalwa. Then you enter a second stage of khalwa at the same time. Khalwa of the inside. What does that mean? No thoughts. Why? Whatever is a thought is a, of, is, a, is a creation itself and of a creation. As Imam al-Tahawi says in his glorious book, لا تبلغه الأوهام ولا تدركه الأفهام Delusions do not encompass him, nor do afham, nor do, nor do thoughts. Your mind is limited, Allah is not limited. Whatever you think about is not him. Second khalwa. Third khalwa. You stop seeing with your eyes and you stop hearing with your ears and you enter an intimate conversation with your Lord, with your heart. And it's only you and your Lord. That's why some of the people of spirituality, they said, you should not even know who the person is beside you praying. Actually, you're praying and then some people say, uh, you prayed like this or et cetera. Where, where were you in your prayer, right? You shall not even know who's beside you. You enter that third stage of khalwa. And then when you're saying the Fatiha, you're having a conversation with Allah. You're talking to Him. Allah's hay, He's alive in a way that is unlike the creation. He's sami' hearing, basir, seeing. He's qahar, He dominates over His creation. He's jabbar, the compeller. He's Afu, the one who forgives. He's Al Alim, the all knowing. He knows what's inside the secret essence of your chest when you do not even know. That's the one who you're talking to. And there was a story that one of the awliya, one of the a'imma, he was making wudu before salah and he went pale. And then somebody asked him, man, like, What's going on? Right? You're pain. And he says, do you not understand the one to whom I'm, speak I'm about to speak? Right? Then, of course, we do Fatiha, but we'll come, we'll come back to that. Then, just so we move on. Then the second thing that we do, or after Fatiha and reading some of the Quran, then we, are the parts of the Quran, then we go into Rukua. Rukua. The scholar says, Ruku'ah, what's happening? You're becoming parallel with the earth. As, in, as if you're remembering that you're of animal background. And when you say, Subhana Rabbil Azim, which is glorified as Allah the tremendous above being likened to the creation or having any imperfection in any way, that's actually what it means. When you're saying that you're seeking mercy and help from Allah, Remembering that you're from this animal nature. And then when you stand up from Rukur, you come back and you're standing straight. And then you are grateful to Allah Ta'ala that He made you a human being and not an animal. And it's interesting that when we do that, what do we say? Sami Allahu liman hamida. Hamdan kathirun tayyiban mubarakan fi. It's a moment of gratitude. And the scholar is saying it's as if in this moment you're, great, you're grateful to Allah that He will. He could have willed that you be a whale or a squirrel or some ant somewhere. Allah willed that you are a human being who's dignified, who 
has the potential to be the most noble of the creation, uh, to be from amongst the most, most noble creations, the creations that the, the angels bow down to, the, the creation that the angels serve, the creation that Allah subjugated, subjugated the whole creation to. You say, Hamdan kathirun tayyiban mubarakan fi. Then you go into sajda. And then you remember that Allah says in Quran, in meaning, just a notion, that you're made from clay. And in gratitude to Allah, you cannot help but be humbled, and you cannot help but prostrate yourself and put your most honorable part of your body, which is the face, which then goes and touches the ground to that which you were made from out of gratefulness and out of humility to Allah and utter desperation and is in that moment that you are closest to Him. And what's interesting, I just made the connection now as well, you started by washing your face with knowledge. Then what did you do? That knowledge allowed you to realize maybe perhaps the best place is for it to be on the floor in humility. Then, before I sit, then he mentions about taslim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And again, in that moment, we are making dua for the people beside us and the imam. And then we're making dua for the people on the left of us by saying assalamu alaikum, which is actually a dua. Uh, but he says also in that moment, what does it look like? Looking, looking. And he says in that moment, of looking and looking, it's as if you're looking for close people and for your friends and for your mother and for your father and for some person in your life to help you, to intercede for you, to seek their aid, and then you realize that it's no avail. The you will be accountable before Allah Ta'ala alone, and the only shafa'ah, the, or let's say the primary shafa'ah, is with the Prophet Sallallahu Ta'ala Alaihi wa Alihi wa Sallam, which you preceded by saying, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Ali Sayyidina Muhammad, etc. Right? This is the salah. Having that connection. Understanding what you're doing. Understanding that you're actually conversing to the one who has complete domination and control over your entire life and your entire destiny and your eternity. The one who's loving and compassionate and gave you everything that you needed. And saves you daily, daily, saves you from disasters and from calamities and from sufferings and from things that you aren't even aware of as you go and you walk to work and you drive and you do all these things. Allah's saving you. And He surrounds you with angels that help you. But we have no hayat. We have no uh, modesty before these angels that surround us. 